happening right now and most importantly how to switch gears from offline to online how to you know think like a millennial when you're just a baby boomer or maybe when you're a millennial how to work and appreciate working hard like a baby baby boomer would so bridging that gap between both creating that gen x um i decided to create a 35 minute webinar um yesterday i literally sat down i wrote down as much notes as possible and I just realized, wow, there's so much I could teach on this topic. I wish I can go beyond 35 minutes. Problem is, um, in fact, my target is 30 minutes, but I went to 35 minutes. But the problem is most people's data and the internet, and um, I don't want to go beyond that. Just add some value, free value, free advice. And um, you know, if you want more detailed stuff, we can definitely teach you that as well. So I want to be able to um, carve out um, the third chapter and I'm not going to, I'm not reading the chapters. I'm not going out there and, um, you know, going out there and giving too much away. In fact, I'm giving you way more than what's on the book. Cause you gotta understand the book is, is I can only write so much. There's no way I could write everything. And, um, I'm, I'm going to have a physical copy that we launch after the quarantine and it'll be more detailed version, but obviously not, 86 pages, maybe about 200 pages, but it's not going to be everything. I mean, each and every single one of those uh, chapters, I could sit here and talk for at least two to three hours per chapter. I could do a live event, a live seminar or, we or webinar just based on the book and sit and talk for, you know, two, three days of content, um, you know, just breaking it down. But I want to be able to break a few things down and make you understand we're in chapter number three. And once again, if you're not in chapter number three, it does not mean that you don't have to listen in because I'm just going to broaden the knowledge and give you way more value than what you paid for $7. Um, I, I had a conversation with Sally and Andrew this morning and I said to them, well, when I joined the industry of network marketing, I remember one of the top earners in the, top, in, in, in the industry saying he told one of his brand new members, guests, well, in fact, he said, You've got to go out there, read this book, and once you read this book, then only, and by the way, the book was called My First Year in Network Marketing. He told the guy, read this book, and once you read this book, then you reach out to me, and if you take seven days, if you take 30 days, and cool, no problem, then you're ready to participate in what I do for a living. Then you're ready for freedom. And he had many people that read the book and many people who didn't read the book. And he put them through a test, a short test, because what we do is we get someone signed up to the company, to the industry. And what starts to happen is when they join, they literally give you the runaround. They make you feel like you're going to go IMD off them overnight. But the sad reality is one week later, they're negotiating on why they should quit this business. I'm hearing it over and over and over and over again, all the time. I've been through it myself. I've seen people go through it. I've been seeing leaders go through it. And most importantly, I just heard um, about an hour ago, I was uh, eating dinner and literally I heard my sister say that someone who joined on Tuesday, oh sorry, not Tuesday, on Friday last week is deciding to quit today. And I'm like, are you serious? Because it does, this whole thing does not get old. It does not get old that people are literally going to quit. So we want to be able to reprogram their mind and make sure they appreciate what you do for a living and they appreciate this industry. And this the, the third chapter is so impactful. It's so vital to understand. I mean, most people that read this book, when they look at the contents page, they look at it and say, well, hold on. Uh, I don't know how to play chess. It's a very boring, um, chess is a very boring game because it, it requires patience. And not again, I got to read this whole chapter. And then they read the chapter. And I always get text messages after chapter number three of people saying, wow, like you really and truly uh, examined and dissected this chess game into life terms, into real life terms. And um, with that being said, um, I I'll just be very blunt and upfront with you. What I'm doing right now is very different. When I sign up a personal, I'm not saying no to them to sign up, but I'm literally going out there and making sure the minute they sign up, they're treating this thing like a real business. They are literally buying my ebook and they're studying it word for word, literally. And, and you, this is not a test where I'm asking you to read, absorb, and rewrite. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to read, absorb, 
and apply. That's all I'm asking you to do. And if all you need to do is read one chapter a day, and, and that's only four pages a day, I promise you, it's not going to take you more than 20 minutes to read a chapter a day. I mean, some chapters are six pages and eight pages, but it's not going to take you more than 20 minutes to read a page. I mean, a chapter. So if you're going to read over 12 chapters, be prepared to carve out about two to three hours of your entire life, which you've already wasted. So when I sign someone up today, I, carved, I put them straight into reading my ebook. Now, what if they don't have the money to join? I make sure they buy the ebook, study the ebook, read the ebook, apply. So when they join, they're already ahead of the masses, they're ahead of the game. But I want to break down chess, chess as a whole, because um, you know, there's so much of vital information. It, so, Andrew, can you quickly make me a host if possible so I can share my screen? Um, you know, chess is such a vital game. And I think it's, such, it's one of the most underrated games you could literally learn. So I don't want you to be a, a, a grandmaster in the chess, on the chess board. I want you to be a grandmaster outside the chess board in life. So I got a few slides that I, I prepared. Um, so you can go, you can go I, I can elaborate on each and every one of them. But if you're taking our notes, I want to be able to talk to you about a few things. So number one, you've got to understand, in chess, every single move has a purpose. So let's take that into life. Every single step, every single word, every single thing you do say and how you act should have a purpose. You should have a purpose on why you're doing it. The problem is when people don't have a purpose, they get bored, they lose focus, they want to jump to the newest, shiniest thing, and they play the overnight, the, 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 the put your man in the microwave, close the microwave, hit 60 seconds, and hit start, compressing time frames and becoming wealthy overnight. So in chess, every single move has a purpose. And then I want you to learn how to play for the advantage. So if you already you know, have the advantage, or if you already have it, maintain it. Um, if you don't have it, you've got to learn how to seize it. And you've got to make sure you get it. When I mean play for the advantage, you know, in sport, you know, you have two types of you know, ways. You, but you've got to understand, in, in chess, it's not really... A, you know, you can't plan the middle game. You can't plan 20, 30 years in your life. Um, you know, all you could do is you could basically go out there and plan the opening of your day, the plan, plan the first step, plan the second step. But then you're going to get to a point where you can't go out there and plan everything. Not everything is predictable uh, unless you're Nostradamus and you, you can literally see the future and you can predict the future. Um, but with that being said, every single Every single um, move is, you know, you got to have a purpose behind it. And most importantly, you've got to have an advantage. You got to play for the advantage. Uh, right now, we're going through the coronavirus. You know, after the coronavirus, we're going to go through the recession. And I believe this recession is going to last. I mean, if people right now are sitting here and getting agitated and feeling like the coronavirus is taking them out the game, I promise you the recession is going to be 10, 20, 30, 45, 50 times worse. So you trying to stick at home. And is, is one thing, is only going to save you more cash. It's the best thing that's probably ever happened for individuals who want to save more because you're saved on petrol, you're saved on going out and eating out in restaurants, saved at going out and shopping all the time. And the only expenses you have is your residual expenses, but alongside that, your food bills. So another thing you want to learn is how to seize the initiative. I mean, if you wait around for someone else to make a decision for you, they will. If you wait for someone else, if you literally going out there, because when, when, when I play chess, there's always you and your opponent. But we, we, we sometimes play teams, meaning 10 plays on one team versus 10 plays on the other team. And, you know, you can't wait for someone else to step in, make a move for you. You've got to be able to play your opponent and make the move yourself. But seize the initiative. Like literally, if you don't have the advantage, create the advantage. I want you to learn how to spot patterns in life, okay? There are often clearly defined lines of success and you've got to learn how to see these when they repeat and you've got to take advantage of it. Now, the problem is 
I'm, I'm watching um, a guy by the name of Ray Dalio. He's the 29th wealthiest guy in the United States. He's worth 19 billion. Um, Ray Dalio is an investor. He's got 1,500 plus staff members, but he is the advisor to the second wealthiest guy in the world, Bill Gates. The, the 29th wealthiest guy in the United States is the advisor to the second wealthiest guy in the world. So I'm watching Ray. Um, and, and when I watch Ray Dalio, I'm literally learning to understand how you, you gotta, you gotta understand that right now we're living in a time where everything needs to be pretty much predictable. And the more you play this game of life, the more you play this game of chess, the more you're going to go out there and find predictable moves, predictable patterns. Now, if you're not going out there and making it predictable, it's because you're not going one step back and consistently practicing over and over and over and over again. And I can't tell you time after time after time, um, you know, for the past two years, my personal development schedule has not been as accurate as it is today. And it was two years ago. And today, well, not just today, the past week, I've been carving out two to three hours a day on personal development. Every morning, an hour, and after 10 p.m., I made a decision to literally switch off from the outside world for two hours to go out and personally develop myself, meaning I'm studying, I'm researching, I'm growing. Um, also want you to understand, you can't, get, you can't get stuck on a specific formula. A little bit of creativity and lateral thinking can often take you to new heights. So as much as you got those patterns, you got to continuously innovate. You know how the pieces move and you know how to move in life. I mean, just like how you know how to go to work and come back subconsciously, but you've got to understand that as we speak, you know, things cannot just be so monotonous. Um, you know, learn how to simplify things because when you, when you create so much of detail, it creates mental health and it puts you to the test mentally. Cut your losses on certain things, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a business partnership, whether it's a business, whether it's an investment, whatever it is, cut your losses because sometimes you're going to lose materialistic things. So try to minimize your losses and then move forward. And then sometimes when I was playing chess, I had to substitute and swap over a piece for a piece because it was worthless on the board, just like high in life. So sometimes you're going to learn how to cut your losses and walk away, then go through a deeper loss. I want you to, and I talked about this in, in, in the book, I want you to play the board and not the player. So when, when, when you read that, or when you read that, I want you to understand, don't target your responses at people. Target what they say and do. There is a difference. There's a huge difference. What most people are doing is they're not playing the game of life. They're playing the game of competing against other people, competing against yourself. So stop playing the game of life. Stop playing other people. Stop playing the game of, uh, you know, going out there and understanding it's all about competition. Yes, there is, it's vital to have healthy competition, but it, competition leads to disappointment if you're going to lose. Sometimes you get, a, you get stuck in a position, you know, known in chess as um, a zug zwag, which is, um, a move you can't make um, because either one is going to be a bad move. If you move the piece, it's going to be a bad move. Um, you know, just this, just the way it is, um, it goes out there and, and, and you got to understand it's just not in chess. It's life. You, there's no such thing as zugs in, in, in life, but you got to understand there's bad moves and you got to calculate them too. We all take risks in life. Um, and, and I want to be able to open up this short PowerPoint and talk to you a bit about how you could, thrive of the meanings, well, the purpose of the game, the value of each piece, the mission of the game, the outcome, etc. The key every night is to program yourself like a chess master with your next 15 moves. The number of possible ways to play the first four moves for both sides in a game of chess is 318 sorry, yeah, 318 million plus. The average chess master knows the next 10 to 15 moves at all times. So, and, and I'm not saying knows, but it, I'm not saying it's guaranteed to happen. So as much as you know your next 10, 10 to 15 moves, 
you can't, you can't guarantee that your opponent is going to specifically do something different in life. You can't guarantee that your competitor, you can't guarantee that your haters are going to follow your suit and your lead. Um, in business, the more moves you are ahead of your competitors, the more the odds are in your favor. So how many moves are you thinking ahead? And the amateurs only think one to three moves in, ahead in life. And I, and I want to pause here. I'm not just talking about chess. When I first joined the chess board game, when I first learned how to play chess, I couldn't see beyond my eyelashes. I could only see the first one to three moves. I was an amateur, played with professionals, masters, grandmasters. They could read me like a book. But you start to innovate, you start to grow, you start to evolve, just like in life. Four to five moves in advanced professionals, six to 10 moves is masters. And then 11 to 15 moves is a grandmaster. So I want to get you to the point where you're a grandmaster and you can see 11 to 15 moves in advance in life. So it all, all it takes is one leader. You start looking at people like Elon Musk, top left, Stephen Jobs, Jeff Bezos, Michael Burke, Coco Chanel, all of these different individuals. You start to look at them, they change makers. They're not one of those people who, you know, uh, decided to play a chess game for one game and they win and they keep that same win rate. No, they continuously playing that game. Some of them, like Elon Musk, is working over 16 hours a day. Some of us complain that they can't work eight hours a day. You get people like Elon Musk, who's working 16 plus hours a day. You know, Jeff Bezos owns 13% of Amazon today, but the guy is a multi-billionaire. I'm not talking about one, two, 10, 15. I'm talking about 100 billion plus dollars here. So Oprah Winfrey, a change maker. So my goal is to help you with mental preparation. Because you got to decide. I mean, do you want to treat this life like a casual side gig? You want to treat it like an employee? You're going to start treating it like a founder of a business? You're going to treat it like a CEO? Big difference between founder and CEO, by the way. Okay? Life, maybe you want to treat this life like a professional athlete, work ethic like an athlete. What do you want to go out there and live your life as if you, you are? You want to lead like an employee? Well, it's not a bad thing, but you've got to report to many people. You want to go out there and lead your life and live it like a founder where you don't report to many people besides yourself. CEO still going to report to your, you know, your founder, but they're in charge of CTO, CFO. Um, they, they're in charge of the employees, the managers, etc. A professional athlete, they're not a spectator. They're not a commentator. They're the go-getter. People pay to watch them play on the field. So you look at the word shashin. Shashin is a word from the Zen Buddhism meaning beginner's mind. It refers to having an attitude of openness, eagerness, and lack of preconceptions when studying, is in a, studying a subject, even when studying at an advanced level. So I want you to go back to that shashin mentality beginner's mind that mind when you were 18 years old when you had no bulls no attachments no uh mental pain i mean I, I, when i was growing up i heard a lot of people say don't grow up because with being an adult comes a lot of worry stress responsibilities as much as i feel there's a lot, a, a lot of responsibilities I'm happy to be an adult because I always stayed in beginner's mind, beginner's mode, millionaire student mode. There's so much more to the millionaire student. There's so much more to the millionaire student. It's not just becoming a millionaire, as I mentioned in the book. It's remaining in student mode. So there's two questions we're trying to figure out. Mind the spelling. We're trying to figure out today. Who do you want to be and how do you want to create your wealth? Because with chess, it's going to allow you to go out there and define who do you want to be. Because you've got the strategies, you've got the how-tos. Now you've got to literally implement that and, and, and take it into consideration knowing, hey, I want to be an inspirational speaker. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be an Instagram blogger or TikTok influencer. I want to be a model. I want to be a sportsman. I want to be a teacher. What do you want to be? And only you can know what you want to be. 
can't live in other people's shadows. You can't try to emulate people. When I, when I sit down with people, I always ask them, who do you want to be? Because that allows me to define who they are. So I don't think most people have defined who they truly are. And you sit down and you ask yourself, who do you want to be? And you might take 10, 15, 20 minutes to answer that question. But you ask your child who's six years old in grade one, who do you want to be? And in a split second, mom, dad, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a pilot. I want to be an astronaut. Limitless thinking. Limitless thinking. And as we grow up in life, we think more. But you got to start to understand we're evolving here. We are evolving. Go back to the 1980s. The, one of the fastest cars was a Ferrari back then. The speed of a Ferrari, zero to 100. Compare that today with a car like a Golf is exact same speed. We're evolving. We're growing. We're adapting. So you got to be able to learn who do you want to be. Understand, I, you're going to be an inspirational speaker. I don't want you to say I want to be Tony Robbins. Tony's his own person. Who do you want to be? And how do you want to create your wealth? You want to you create your wealth by just going out there and being an employee? That could be creating your wealth. Wealth does not always mean you know, enough money in the bank account. Wealth does not always, always mean you're wealthy, you're rich. You could be wealthy in your health, wealthy in your spirituality, wealthy in your relationships. Or maybe you want to be wealthy in your you know, finances. What do you want to be wealthy at? And how do you want to create that? You get two types of people in the world. Actors and doers. Doers is the 2%. Actors is the majority, the 98%. Within every group of people, there are 80% actors and 20% doers. I've just said 98% uh, and 2%. Why? Because... I'll, I'll break it down in the next slide where you understand within those doers, there's another group of doers as well. I'm going to break that down. And within that 20% that I mentioned above, there's also another 80 to 20% that's split there. And within that 20%, there's still another 20% as well. The real doers are the 20% of the 20% of the 20%. Because you got to understand, on this call right now, a few hundred people. I take you and I scan this whole call and I find the real doers. And I put you in a, in a room. The 20% of doers on this call. The 80%, I eliminate them. I take this 20% who was the, the, the top line and I put you in a room with greater minds, change makers. You now become the 80%. They become the 20%. Some of you will strive and make it to that 20%. And then I'll take that 20% and put them in a room which is better. So your goal is to continuously strive to make the 20% but never realize that it's a ceiling. And that's why I'm always learning and studying. And, re and uh, I've got 20 to 50 people that I'm studying on a daily basis. Daily basis. Yesterday's person I study is very different to today's person. So I don't want to take up your time where you can go study 50 people when I can study them and put it in my mind and give it to you, so you're studying 51 people, me plus the other 50. As I mentioned, you got your 80% and you got your 20%, actors and doers. You always get a one that very small, minute 1%. But you take that 20%, you break it down again and put them in a new room. Once again, as you can see, every level has actors and doers. Every level also has high performance doers that require you to take massive action. That 20% becomes 80% in the next room. That 20% in the second room moves into 80%. There's always a smarter room ahead of us. So I want you to be able to study the most important person or product in the world. It's you. Stop studying other people. Stop studying other people. You're so good at knowing when Kim Kardashian's about a launch chain a newest product. You're so good to find out when Justin Bieber launches his new track. You're so good to find out when Will Smith drops his next movie. But I want you to study you. And this is coming from me to you, where I want you to learn how to study you. Break down that pyramid, the most solid foundation in the world. 
I believe most people are on survival phase until they get a taste of status, fame, fortune, a taste of it. And they start to climb up that ladder. And then they go to freedom. And they get a taste of how it feels like not to work, but you're still getting paid. But it's only that 1% that gets to the level of purpose. But I love staying in purpose and survival. Survival allows me to work like I'm broke. And purpose allows me to have a reason to work so I can work as long as I want to without getting worn out. I just jumped up for call before you. I've got another call in the next few minutes after you. And I'm on this call right now. And I'm always on calls and I'm always learning and studying and preparing for the next level. How do you find the time session? Well, I, I, I just wake up two hours earlier than I was meant to. Because that allows me to put in that two hours to studying and researching. I got to keep evolving. Otherwise, I can't teach. Analyze so you know what you're clear about and what you want. So many people can talk a big game. And they say things like, I'm a big thinker. I have big plans. And no one will do it like me. But when you ask them a few questions, you realize some of them are clueless. So I want to ask you the question. What do you want? Because you're playing a chess game of life here. What do you want from life? What is your satisfaction level? What is your break-even point from life before you pass on? Then I want you to figure out why you want it. So you figure out in the outer circular flow, and then you're figuring out the target, why you want it. And you'll realize the how getting you to the why will figure itself out when you understand what and why. What do you want? Why do you want it? You would understand whatever you want, it needs to be attached to an emotional outcome. Because that's how it's going to create that how to get you to the final product, the end vision, the final game, the last move. So I want to be able to talk about a few more things before we close this webinar. So I talked about chess and I talked about a few things with regards to how you could utilize chess, but it's way beyond chess guys. It's about finding clarity to life. So I'm doing this webinar right now and I got all these little, little lights right here and all of them are dead. I thought it was charged and I was doing this webinar, as you could see in the beginning, one died, I put the second one on, died in like a minute, put the third one on, I was already dead. I'm starting to realize something that I could have stopped and said, hold on, I don't want to do this call. Because I could not, you could not see me, but I had clarity. I knew what the outcome of this call would be. Some of you need a light to shine on you, to make you do something in life. But remember, when the light switches off, when the light is taken away from you, when you're in true darkness, would you still continue the path of greatness? You don't need a light. You don't need a camera. You don't need cheerleaders. You don't need people around you. You got to find clarity in why you're living, who you are, and what you want to achieve. And that allows you to create that ritual in your life. So I got a, a schedule that I live my life. And I'm very precise on how I do it. You know, this is my Monday and Tuesday here. I got my Wednesday and Thursday. What I need to do. I mean, I'll give you a typical example. A typical example. My Mondays, let's talk about today, Tuesday. I woke up, 8 a.m., morning rituals, pray, affirmation, visualization, 8.30, personal development for 30 minutes, 8.30, post on social media, whilst I'm watching personal development, 9.15, had a call, 9.45, had a call, 10.15, had a call, 10.45, had a call. Four calls. Four calls in literally two hours. Post on social media at 2.30, but in between those times, I'm working, replying to emails, innovating, thinking. Another call at 4 p.m. 5 p.m. is my chill time for an hour. 6 p.m., hit the gym for 40 minutes. 
have dinner after that, 8.30 post on social media, and then at 10, I switch off and I study research for two hours on personal development. But I need you to understand something. You gotta have clarity. You gotta be clear and concise. You just have to know what you want from this life. What is your outcome? What is your achievement? What do you need? What's your break even point? I mean, create your own ritual because you understand people, they don't have a ritual because they, they, they lack focus. So they, they don't know where to focus and they don't know where to focus their energy. I mean, you look at one of the greatest minds in the world, rest in peace, Steve Jobs. But Steve Jobs suggested that we all ask ourselves this question every single day. Well, there's two questions. I'm going right, to tell you what Steve Jobs said, and I'm going to tell you what I said. If today was the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? That's the first question. If today is the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And the second question is, if I die today, can the people around me still live without me? Because if I'm asking those questions, I promise you, you will find your reason, your purpose, and your passion. Just understand, you've got to be able to utilize chess. I don't care if you're not a grandmaster. You've got to be a grandmaster in life. And, and, and that's why I'm teaching as much as I'm teaching. You'll probably see me put out more content now than I've ever put out. Why? Because I'm ready. I've been studying. I've been researching. I've been working on myself for a very long time. And if I did this last year, I wouldn't be ready on my eighth year of entrepreneurship and 18 years of personal development. I did it five years ago. I don't think I'd be ready when I was three years into business. I don't think I'd truly be ready. Now I'm ready. Eight years in, I'm ready for the next level to help you. And I, I say this with all due respect, but this is way more than $7. Way more than $7. What you're learning right now, you understand, I'm spending two and a half hours to three hours a day on personal development. I jump on a call like this to teach you to save you time, save you money, saving data time, you're saving money, you're saving data, you're saving a lot of other stuff. It's way beyond $7. If I was you, I'd be making sure we take this book and we really and truly change the world. We change the world with a book. You gotta start to understand that after this pandemic starts to dry, die off and dry off, the recession comes louder and faster and, and much bigger. And, and you're going to see some of the biggest companies in the world right now are trying to be saved by the government, not just in South Africa, but United States and all around the world. And I disagree about that because I agree on the fact that all these big companies, if they weren't saved by the government, it actually hinders brand new entrepreneurs who want to start off today who can replace those people because their ideas are bigger, more fresh. They want to work harder and they don't have the government to back them up. But the recession's coming and it's already here, but you just can't see it because it's di disguised with this whole coronavirus. So you want to be able, I think we sold about, and, and this book is way bigger than just World Ventures, way bigger than Netto Marketing. I think we sold about 500 today, just in one day. Nothing to do with, from World Ventures, maybe about 20, 30. Outside World Ventures, we're pushing the numbers. Why? And you've got, to, you've got to do the math. I don't care about the money. It's not about the money because my value for what I'm giving you is way beyond $7. I just want to say how you utilize this tool, this book is going to allow you to make enough money in life. You already bought the book. What are you studying next? Go get my business mastery for $149 for eight hours. Go get my virtual upline mentor, $192 for seven hours. I mean, go get whatever you can do. I don't care if you buy my stuff, if you buy whoever else's stuff, I don't care, but just be able to understand what are you going to study next? And the consistency of you self-developing yourself. Because the free stuff on the internet is not going to make you a millionaire. It's the stuff that you really and truly pay for that you appreciate because you're going to execute on it. So you want to be able to understand. It's like a typical example of you got your house, you got your electricity on. You pay for it every month. So that's why you flip the switch off and you put it off because you appreciate the value of electricity because when that bill shows up, you literally have to pay it. So I'm, I'm teaching you how to appreciate the value of personal development and self-development. Um, you know, you don't have to spend the millions. So you already have the ebook. Study it, apply it, absorb it. Don't give it to other people. Let them buy it themselves. 
Let them pay their own price. Let them learn. Let them um, execute and pay their own price for success. What are you studying next? Make sure you get VUM. Make sure you get the business mastery. I want to be able to create as many courses as possible and give you real true value and help you. I want to be able to create the Netflix for entrepreneurs. And that's, what, that's my mission right now. That's my purpose. That's where I get fulfillment and being content. So appreciate your time. Thank you for being on here today. And once again, next week, we'll discuss, well, the third, third call, third week, we'll discuss chapter number four. And we'll dissect it. But most importantly, I don't want the same faces. Last week, we only had one WhatsApp group of about 150 people. Today, we have one and a half WhatsApp group, 260, 254 people and another group of like 100 plus. So once again, I'll catch you next week. Stay blessed, guys.